Oh, thank you. <laughs> Maybe take a moment to adjust your seat. And growing tall through the crown of the head as you feel the sit bones connecting with the earth below. Allow the gaze to soften, or if it's comfortable, you can close the eyes. And from here, we'll take three deep cleansing breaths, inhaling deeply through the nose, fill the lower belly with air. And then as you exhale, make it audible. Perhaps even let out a sigh. <sighs> and we'll do that three times collectively all together. Inhale through the nose and exhale right out the mouth. <sighs> Again, inhaling deeply and exhale completely. One more round here, inhaling and exhale, let it all go. And centering into our space, connecting with the breath. Returning back to our center. Allow each exhale to create a wave of relaxation, washing away whatever it is you're coming for. And giving yourself the gift of presence, allow yourself to be here now, setting aside any distractions. Spending a few more cycles of breath here in this seated position. And from this space, I'd like to read a quote with you. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Martin Luther King. So tonight, as we flow through our practice, I want to invite you to notice where you, where you meet challenge and just kind of play with the transitions and the movement. I like to think of my yoga mat as sort of like a laboratory um, for life. And so when we find ourselves being challenged on the mat, how do we respond? Are we able to hold our center? Are we able to keep our foundation? These are the things that I want to invite you to look for. And with that, also, when we are in a space of comfort and ease, how do we respond? This is another thing that I want to invite you to bring into your intention. And with that said, feel free to take a moment to set a sankalpa, set an intention for your practice this evening. And from here, we'll circle, sweep our arms out to the side, reach and extend, spread the fingers wide, palms meet above the crown, peeling it in, draw the hands right down the side. And from here, we'll start to make our way onto our back. Finding a apanasana, go ahead and give yourself a hug. Since we can't hug each other, we'll have to hug ourselves. 
So squeezing those knees in, go ahead and give yourself a little back massage, rock side to side. And it might feel good to kind of stir the pot, taking hold of the knees and drawing some circles with the knees, massaging into that low back. And then switching directions. Let's go ahead and reach and extend the arms and the legs long. So growing tall from the tips of the fingers down to the tips of the toes. Really lengthening here. We'll start to be banana. So go ahead and maybe bend into one knee and send that right hip a little bit over to the right. And then we'll straighten into the leg reaching the arms over to the right. So we're creating this crescent moon banana shape with the body. Sometimes it can feel nice to take that right ankle and cross it over the left for a deeper stretch. Or maybe switch it up. It can feel a little bit stabilizing to cross the left ankle over. And as you inhale, breathing length into the side body. And we'll start to make our way back to center. And maybe bump that left hip out to the side as you start to walk the feet to the right. And then bringing the arms over to the right, creating that banana shape. Once again, really emphasize the length as you inhale, creating space in the side body. Coming back to center. From here, we'll find kind of like, um, I'm not sure what we'll call this, <laughs> maybe like a dead bug pose. <laughs> So we're going to find essentially a tabletop position, but on our back. So we're going to mimic a bird dog sequence. So imagine that you are on the knees, on the hands. So reaching the arms up, bend at the knees, and try to find a flex in those feet. And from here, we'll start to warm up the core. So inhale deeply through the nose, and then as you exhale, extend the left leg and the right arm. So finding this cross crawl movement. And then inhale back to center. And we'll cycle through both sides using our breath. So extending that right leg, left arm, inhale back to center. And then exhale the other side. So essentially, we are doing exactly what we would be doing in a tabletop without the impact. So this is a great modification if you have any knee issues. And we'll keep it rolling for three more rounds. And from here, go ahead and hug it all in. And dropping that left foot down to the mat, cross the right ankle over the left thigh, finding a recline figure four. Go ahead and thread the arms through, drawing that left knee in closer to the chest. Maybe you might want to use that right elbow to press 
into that right knee, creating a deeper stretch. Sometimes it can feel nice to kind of explore any areas that might be holding tension. So I kind of like to rock my hips side to side until I find that spot. And then pause and hold and breathe into the breath. And we'll start to release the arms out wide, drifting the legs over to the right. So we're finding kind of a funky twist here, aiming to stretch in to the psoas, that hip flexor on the left front side. So that right ankle is kind of pinning down that left knee. And then we'll come back, center, uncross the leg. Go ahead and send the knees side to side like windshield wipers. And then coming back to center, we'll cross the right or the left ankle over the right side, hugging that right knee in closer towards the chest. Once again, just exploring where we might be holding tension in the left hip, the left glute. And just shining the light of awareness in the deep. We'll start to release the hands, keeping the shape with the legs. Bring that right foot down to the mat and then send both knees over to the left. Arms can extend out wide. And that left ankle pins down that right knee. Feel a nice deep exhale. We'll send those legs back to center. Go ahead and rock side to side. And if it feels good, you can start to rock up and down like a rocking horse. And we'll eventually make our way all the way up to standing at the top of our mat. And from here, feeling into our foundation, imagine a tripod at the feet. So the top two corners creates that face of the triangle and then the point of the triangle at the heel. And we'll inhale, circle, sweep the arms up and over the crown. As you exhale, flat back, forward fold. And take a moment here to really feel into this bowl. And I suggest having a nice, deep, generous bend in the knee here in our first forward fold. And just allowing that belly to land on the side. And lots of the options here for the arms. You can grab on to opposite elbows. We're going to interlace the palms behind the back and release the shoulders. One of my favorites is to interlace the hands at the base of the skull, so creating a little bit of weight to practice that a lot. And feel free to maybe explore movement, pedaling out the knees. Maybe it just feels good to find stillness and connect to your center. Let's 
start to slowly roll all the way up to the other foot, allowing the head, neck, and shoulders to come up. From here, go ahead and roll the shoulder up, back, and down a few times. And we'll inhale, circle, sweep the arms up once more. As you exhale, flat back, forward fold. And we'll inhale, tap with and lengthen. Pause and hold here. We're going to really emphasize the length here. <laughs> so bringing those hands to the hips. Find that crease in that bend. Maybe check in with the knees. I have a tendency to hyperextend, so maybe finding a little bit of softness in the knees. I'm gonna protect those joints. And from here, we'll start to bring our arms out wide to the ceiling, strength in our core, strength in the back. And we'll start to swim. So as we exhale, go ahead and bring those arms forward alongside each other. And then as you inhale, swim them back. Moving with your breath, you get nice and slow. And we'll pause and hold with the arms extended alongside the ears, finding a Kali Mudra. So interlacing the fingers, extend the thumb and the so a little warrior three prep here to warm up the core. Check in with your back. Try to make sure it's flat and straight. And really engaging the core. We'll hold for two more breaths. You got this. And then exhale, let it all go. Release down forward. And we'll inhale, reach and extend. And drawing those palms right down the midline. We'll move through a half sun salutation A. Inhale, reach those arms up. As you exhale, flat back, forward fold. Inhale, lift at the heart. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach and extend. And drawing those palms down the midline. We'll keep it moving. Inhale, reach. Exhale, flat back all the way down. Inhale, extend through the collarbone. Exhale, plant the palms. Step it back, find your plank. Always an option to drop the knees if you're taking it easy this evening. And from here, we're going to lower all the way down to the belly. Rolling cobra, keeping the palms directly beneath the shoulders as we inhale, lift the chest. Pressing the tops of the feet into the mat as you exhale, roll that chest back and sweet. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. And exhale. Lower. One last time here. Option to take it into an upward dog or keep it low. Inhale, lift. If you're in that up dog, press the tops of the feet into the mat. The top of the mat. And then exhale, lower or send those hips up and back. Downward facing dog. We'll all meet in our dog. So taking a few moments once again in our first downward facing dog. To feel into this pose, feel how your body's doing this week. Maybe it feels good to pedal out to seat. Maybe it feels good to shake the head yes, shake the head no. Wherever you're at, see if you can really lengthen through the tailbone, emphasizing the length in the back of the leg. And see if you can draw those heels down some weight towards the back of the mat. Maybe, 
maybe even lift the toes, really emphasizing, putting that weight towards the heel, lengthening in to that back side of the body. From here, we'll start to lower those toes as we slowly walk up to the hands. Take your time. Landing in that forward fold. And we'll inhale, reach and rise. We can pasta, drawing those palms to meet right down the midline. And let's inhale, circle, sweep. Exhale, flat back fold. Inhale, half lift and lengthen. Exhale, palm the mat, step the right foot back, long, low lunge, right knee finds the mat. And go ahead and walk those hands up to the knee. See if you can kind of lean back into this pose. And we'll reach the arms up and along to here. And then as you exhale, float the hands down to the mat. Straighten into the left leg, draw the toes towards the nose, finding half lift. And we'll start to bend in to that left knee, tucking the toes, plant the palms, step it back, plank pose. Again, always an option to drop the knee. We'll move through our first full sun salutation here, lowering down, chaturanga. Inhale, your choice, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Look up towards the hands. Make your way to the top of the mat. Find that half lift. Extend through the spine and then exhale, release. As you inhale, reach and rise. Join those palms down the midline. Let's keep it flowing. Inhale, reach. Exhale, take that swan dive. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, pull. And we'll step that left foot back. Heading into the low lunge, dropping the left knee down to the mat. Bringing those palms up to the thigh. See if you can lean back a little bit into this pose. So we don't really want to dump into our hips right now. We're trying to feel the stretch more in the front of that left leg. So creating some length there, reach the arms up alongside the ear. And then we'll exhale, flip those hands down to the mat. Half split, straighten into that right leg. Maybe inch that foot forward a little bit. You want to make sure that your wrists are stacked over or under the shoulders. <laughs> and once again, it might feel good to kind of wiggle in the pose. Just to feel that point of resistance and then pause and hold. We'll start to bend into that knee, stepping it back, plank pose. Again, moving through that vinyasa, or feel free to skip. We will all meet in our downward dog. And from here, let's extend that right leg up high through the sky. See if you can drop that left heel down closer to the mat a little bit. And as we exhale, we'll draw that right knee towards the nose, stepping it through, finding a high lunge. Inhale, reach those arms along. As you exhale, you can open it out, warrior two. So standing out in all directions. Arms reach wide, back heel comes to 90 degrees. Right knee is stacked over that right ankle. 
Allow your gaze to look softly over that right palm. As you inhale, go ahead and lift the palm. Exalt your warrior. Reach it up and back. From here, we'll cartwheel the palms to frame that foot. Stepping it back, heading into our plank pose once again. Moving through that vinyasa or feel free to skip. And we will all meet in downward facing dog. And from our dog, go ahead and lift that left leg up high to the sky, turning it your dog. See if you can sink that right heel down closer to the mat. And then as we exhale, draw that left knee towards the nose, stepping it through, heading into that high lunge on the way up to the mat. Reach those arms up alongside the ear. Find your stability here. Taking that deep bend in the left knee. And then with your next exhale, open it out, warrior two. So shifting the orientation of the hips and the torso. Allow those arms to extend long. And maybe take a glance at that back hand. Make sure that you know where you are in space. <laughs> Sometimes that back arm is doing something and I don't know what. <laughs> so it's always good to check. From here, go ahead and flip that front palm. Exalted warrior, reach up and back. And we'll exhale back to our warrior two. From here, star pose. Straighten in to that front leg. Pivot the toes. Face the long edge of the mat. And reach those arms out wide. See how much space you can take up here. Yeah. And we'll inhale those arms up. And then as we exhale, begin to take your bow forward. From here, we'll start to get a little bit active in our pulse. So go ahead and walk the hands out until you find a half lift and lengthen. And from here, we'll extend those arms along the again. So working the core. <laughs> find a nice flat back. And we'll start to swim as we exhale, drawing those arms over the ground. As we inhale, swim back. Pulsing with the breath for just a few rounds here. And then exhale, find your fold. And we'll start to pivot towards the top of the mat once more, finding a low lunge and then step it fast, plank pose or down dog. Your choice to flow or take a break. We will all meet in our downward facing dog. And bending the knees, look up towards the hands, pop or step, top of the mat. Inhale, shine the heart forward. Exhale, release. Inhale, reach and rise. And then sink it low, Utkatasana, chair pose. Deep bend in the knee, nice flat back here. Bending weight into the heels. Maybe lift those toes. And let's reach the arms along to the ears. Sinking lower into those hips, building some heat from the top of the leg. And then we'll start to slowly lift one foot. I recommend bringing palms to heart center. Let's lift the right foot. And slowly, slowly with control, We'll do a little drive-by in warrior three, heading all the way in to that Anjali Asana, high lunge. 
And from here, we'll open it out once more. Warrior two. We've been here before. See if you can notice something different this round. I'm gonna suggest paying attention to that back lateral line of the foot. Can you feel that edge of the foot rooting down? And we'll flip that left palm, reach it up and back to claw to prayer. And go ahead and start to straighten into that front knee, heading into the Trikonasana triangle. Feel free to grab a block if you prefer to use a block for this practice. Reaching that left arm, the left hand down to the ankle or the shin, and the block. Right arm extends long. Really try to stay active here in this time. If you can. Pull that right hip back slightly. Reaching from fingertip to fingertip. From here, we'll bring that right hand, or yeah, the right hand to the hip. Go ahead and shift your gaze to the front of that foot in front of that left. And reaching that left palm, we're heading into Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. Start to extend that right leg behind. <laughs> and reaching that right arm up. And playing with your balance here. Feel free to stay or maybe find asana, that sugar cane pose, bending into the leg. And as you feel ready, please slowly start to make your way back into that exalted warrior. So heading back into our warrior two, go ahead and reach that left arm up and back. And from here, we'll find that star pose once again. So go ahead and pivot the toes. Switch that orientation to the side of the mat. Extend the arms and the legs wide. And from here, we'll exhale. Pivot the toes as we sink the hips low, finding our goddess or horse pose. You choose. <laughs> and allowing those toes to face in the same direction as the knees. See if you can sink the hips a little bit lower. And we'll inhale, lengthen, straighten into the legs, pivot the toes once more. As you exhale, find that fold. And we'll find a half lift here. So bringing those palms beneath the shoulders. Go ahead and start to walk to the back of the mat, Dandasana. So allowing the left toes to point up high, we'll find a slow lunge. And feel free to keep those palms grounded or maybe lift them. And we'll take it in the other direction, Dandasana to the front of the mat. And go ahead and pivot to the front of the mat. Low lunge, step it back, plank or down dog. Your choice to flow or skip it. We will all meet in down dog. Looking up towards the hands, make your way top of the mat. Inhale, lift, exhale, fold. And we'll inhale, reach and rise. And then sink it low, Uttapati. Building some heat here. 
knees on the hips, legs on the low. Reach and extend the arms alongside the ears. See if you can lift those front toes. I don't know why I said front. I don't know if anybody has back toes. <laughs> Sinking a little lower here. And then we'll draw those palms back down the midline. Go ahead and hover the left foot. Finding a one-legged chair. And then slowly start to make your way through a little warrior three drive by. And then heading into our Anjali Asana. And then we'll open it out, warrior two. Extend the arms wide, deep and then right. Go ahead and flip that right palm, reach it up and back, fall forward. And from here, we'll start to straighten into that right leg. Heading into our Tadamasana triangle. Feel free to use the block if you wish. Or simply bring that right hand through the shin. Standing that left arm up high. Really try to stack the fingertips. And keeping some softness in that front knee if you have a tendency to overextend. Allowing that face to look up through those fingertips. Or if your neck is feeling a little bit I don't know what the word is, nudgy or tense. You can always look down towards the foot. And we'll inhale, reverse, reach up. Just getting head right back into that triangle pose. <laughs> and then start to take a bend in that right knee. Allow your gaze to look about a foot in front of your foot. Heading into half moon artist and drop the neck. Extend through all four directions. Maybe play with your balance. Maybe float those fingertips off the mat. Hang out here in a half moon or maybe find a shahasana variation. Looking onto the foot and the shoulder chain. We'll start to make our way back. So slowly heading back the way we came. Reverse that warrior. Reach up and back. And finding that star pose once again. Extending out in all directions. See how much space you can take up here. And then we'll pivot the toes. Bring palms to heart center. Finding that goddess. Sinking low into the hips. Imagine there's a weight at the pelvis, pulling that pelvis down. And we'll inhale, strengthen or straighten, <laughs> and then exhale, forward fold. Finding that half lift. Put in ninja walk to the back of the mat. Sound up. Right toes point up to the ceiling. Pressing in through the thighs. Back to the leg. Hamstring. And then we'll kind of ninja walk over to the front of the mat. Sound up to the hip side. Point the left toes up to the ceiling. And from here, go ahead and find a nice little lunge. Step it back, plank pose or downward dog, your choice. We will all meet in our dog. And bending those knees, look up towards the hands. 
hover float to the top of the mat. Inhale, half lift and lengthen. Exhale, to fold. Go ahead and find a deep bend of the knees. Let the belly touch the thighs. And then inhale, reach and rise. Keeping that deep bend in the knees, sink the hips low. And bringing those palms apart to center. We're going to test our balance here. So we can just float that right foot off of the mat, sinking it into the left leg. Shakes and wobbles are always welcome. <laughs> and we'll slowly start to make our way into a warrior three. Extending that right leg long behind. See if you can drop that right hip to the left. And challenging our balance here. Inhale, can you bring that knee towards the chest? One leg in one hand. And then exhale. See if you can float it back. Warrior three. Really feeling into the strength and stability of that left foot, that left leg. We'll inhale once more. <laughs> Draw that knee towards the chest. From here, we'll start to take a, a bend in that left knee. Eagle leg and wrap that left leg around, I'm sorry, right leg around the left. Extend your wings wide and we'll take the right arm beneath the left, crossing out the elbows. Standing the elbows up high, see if you can lift them towards the ceiling. Sink low into the knees. And we'll inhale, release. And take a minute to shake it out. Ooh, my leg is feeling it. <laughs> All right. We'll move through vinyasa here if you choose to do so. Or go ahead and make your way to downward dog. However you want to get there. All right, come our downward dog. Look up towards the hands. Bend the knees, see if you can hop to it. <laughs> Inhale, half lift, exhale to fold. Inhale, reach and rise, and then sink it low, Utkatasana. Reaching those arms alongside the ears. Sink into the heels the balls of the feet. Maybe lift those toes. And we'll start to draw those palms to heart center. Getting ready for a little challenge here. <laughs> Begin to slowly lift that left knee, sending it all the way back into our airplane pose for your three. Once again, check it in with the hips. See if you can level them off. Sometimes I like to take my hands right to the hips just to check in and see what they're doing. <laughs> find your drishti, find your focus. And if you need to get wobbly, if you fall out, no worries. It's a chance to observe and see how you respond. From here, we'll slowly. <laughs> Start to lift that left knee towards the chest, one leg in round. And then exhale. Can you send it back? Warrior three. Moving slowly, we'll start to draw that knee towards the chest once more, heading into our eagle leg. Start to bend into the right knee as you wrap the left over the right. Extending the arm wide. Go ahead and bring the left elbow underneath the right. 
side of your body. As you inhale, lift the elbows and make the hips low. A few more cycles of breath here. Awesome job. Go ahead and release and shake it out. <laughs> From here, <laughs> let's go ahead and find our way onto a seat. Planting the soles of the feet. One last hard thing here, guys. <laughs> Extending through the crown, through the spine. Begin to lift one leg and then the other. We're going places. We took a plane. Now we're on a boat. <laughs> Send those arms and breathe deep here for five, four, three, two, one. From here, go ahead and roll it all the way back. Maybe find a plow pose or maybe. Simply curl up into a little ball. Now's a really great time to find an inversion in our class. So if you would like to find a shoulder stand or even a headstand, a handstand, or maybe simply feet to sky. Reversing that blood flow. Find a few rounds of breath. Wherever you're at in your inversion, be slowly and mindfully, safely begin to make your way out. From here, we'll start to plant the soles of the feet, crossing that right ankle over the thigh once more. Finding that reclined figure four. Draw that left knee in closer towards the chest. And maybe notice the difference when we take a breath at the end of our practice. And we'll start to release the hands, keeping the shape with the legs once more. Extend the arms out wide. And go ahead and drift those knees over to the right. And once again, feeling in the left hip flexor. Just allow the movement. A lot of times when people experience low back, is not always in the low back. Sometimes it can be piriformis, the glute med, and even the psoas. There is a saying in massage therapy world <laughs> where it is, it ain't. <laughs> so sometimes where we feel pain or we feel that tension, it doesn't always Go ahead and drift those legs back to center. Plant the soles of the feet. Send the knees side to side. And then we'll switch it out. Left ankle crosses over right thigh. Go ahead and draw that right knee over towards the left. Feet. Feeling that
really common for anyone to try to do this in the morning. So I'll put you on the safe side. <laughs> so just relax at the same for Begin the shake with the start to extend the arms wide, bring the heels towards them, and you can use your left hand beginning down at that right knee. Coming back to center, planting both feet equal to the mat. Go ahead and bend the knees side to side. Massaging into the glutes, the hips. And we'll start to reach and extend from the toes to the fingertips. We're finding a big morning stretch here. Heading back into our banana bar. Go ahead and maybe bump that right hip over to the right as we reach the feet to the left. You can always cross that right ankle over the left for a deeper stretch and push the left arm towards the left corner. And just noticing a difference as we are from the beginning of class. Reflecting on your journey this evening. And as we reach again, we can return to center. Start to maybe bump that left hip over towards the left, walking the feet over towards the right corner, and then reaching those arms over towards the right. Returning back to center. If there are any final movements or postures that your body might be craving right now, please go ahead and do whatever it is you need to do to feel complete in this moment. And then as you feel ready, please make your way into that final resting posture. I want to encourage you to really take up space so bringing each foot to the corner of the mat. And maybe allowing your arms to open up wide, palms face up. And feeling the weight of your body. And feeling the point of the body. Feel yourself to be loving yourself and lovingly supported by the earth around you. And I want to invite you to a body scan. Starting with the heel, the back of the toe. Just 
the low back, the mid back, the upper back. Keep feeling your shoulders, the back of the arm. Really close to the edge of the pinky ear. And feeling the back of the head. The entire back, the entire back of the body connected to the earth. Feel yourself supported, feel yourself rubbing your side. Inviting movement into the fingers and the toes, the ankles and the wrists. And then we'll just extend the arms long over the crown as we draw the knees in towards the chest. And we'll make our way over to one side, pausing here for a moment. Here in this fetal position, in this newborn baby pose. Allow this to be a breath pose. A new beginning. And slowly we can put the eyes back up. Finding comfortable seats. And we'll close our class. Three deep cleansing breaths. The third being the sound cycle. Rooting down into the six bones, lengthen through the crown of the head. And we'll inhale, circle through the arms up and over the crown, drawing the palms to the heart center, Anjali Mudra. And for three, press the heel of the hands into that. And we'll inhale collectively through the nose. Exhale, open the sleeve out. <sighs> inhale deeply. Exhale, let it all go. <sighs> and we'll inhale. 
Tata Om. Oh. Um, I like to yours.